Hey guys, Dr. Huntington here. And as many of you probably know, excess sugar consumption is the number one lifestyle issue that's making people sick today. So in this video, I'll reveal to you some places where sugar is hiding in your diet, and I'll show you how to get rid of it. Now, the fact that sugar is bad for you and should be avoided is almost common knowledge, except that the average American is still eating about 150 pounds of sugar per year. Now, although your body can run pretty efficiently on a diet that contains no sugar in a process called ketosis, that's, that's not what we're going for in this video. If you can get into ketosis, that's great. Uh, but my purpose of this video is to get you to severely limit your sugar intake. Because even if your diet is like better than three quarters of Americans, you're probably still consuming somewhere around 100 pounds of sugar per year. And it's not improving your health. And it's probably making you sick, even if you don't notice it yet. So you need to know that sugar is the most common food additive. And it hides in places that you might not expect, like salad dressings, and pasta sauce. I mean, what's it doing in pasta sauce, right? Uh, bottled iced tea. Even most protein bars are loaded with sugar, right? They name them protein bar. And what happens is most people don't even think to read the label, see how much sugar is in these things. And just about any and every other kind of processed food, there's just way too much sugar. So the way manufacturers are hiding sugar from you is to list it on the label as different names in an attempt to fool you. But once you know these common names, you can start avoiding them. Now sugar actually has over 50 disguised names. I can't cover all of them in this video. You can look them up on the internet. The ones I've actually listed on the board here are the ones that you definitely want to avoid altogether. So here I've got hidden sources of sugar. Number one here, high fructose corn syrup. You do not want to eat that. Ethyl maltol, you do not want to eat that either. Uh, same here, barley, barley malt, fructose, one of the worst sugars you could eat, right? You don't want excess fructose. I understand some of it will be found in your fruit, but don't worry about that. You don't want to be eating foods that have fructose in them uh, if it's not naturally occurring in your fruit. Lactose, sucrose, maltose, dextrose. Now you start to see that in a lot of uh, processed foods. Evaporated cane juice, maltodextrin, of course, you're going to see that a lot in processed foods. Caramel, raw brown rice syrup and or sugar. So now, of course, real fruits and even some vegetables, as I mentioned, contain fructose. So when you eat fruit, you know, you're doing so to get other nutrients, things such as antioxidants and vitamins and phytonutrients. It's definitely not to get the fructose, right? But the amount of fructose that you'll get from a limited amount of low glycemic fruit, you know, should not be a concern. But you don't want any fructose from other sources. If you consume modest amounts of low glycemic fruit, and lots of vegetables, you can actually reduce the risk of the same diseases that eating too much sugar is going to contribute to. Uh, so what you have here is like a situation where uh, some fruits and most vegetables contain so many healthy nutrients that really outweigh in most circumstances whatever sugar they contain. But it's not true for all fruit, you know, just those that have low sugar levels, you know, such as berries. So is sugar really all that bad for you? I mean, well, the answer is yes. I mean, you want to avoid it as much as possible. And this means severely limiting or avoiding it, right? So, you know, products, you want to avoid products with added sugar. Um, you definitely want to avoid fruit juices, fruit juices because it's like, it's like drinking liquid sugar, right? You don't want to drink fruit juice. Um, you want to avoid grains or severely limit grains you know, because these things easily break down into sugar once you consume them. Uh, most vegetables are great, but you want to avoid the starchy vegetables, such as white potato. Uh, and processed foods like cereals and breads and sweetened yogurt, chips, things like that. You know, not only do processed foods often contain the unneeded sugar, uh, but also contain unhealthy fats. And usually they lack the fiber that normally helps to balance out the, car the carbohydrates that you would find in whatever whole food that the processed food, it's no longer a whole food, but whatever, whatever whole food was used to make that processed food, you know, a lot of times the fiber is gone, right? So you lose that buffering effect. So with regard to diseases, the more sugar you consume, 
the greater your risk for diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease, and if you're keeping track, I mean, that's, that's two, the two top causes of death, right? And about a third of the population is probably either diabetic or pre-diabetic. So, in fact, uh, sugar is what actually uh, feeds cancer cells. It's what they live on. So, you know, if I'm worried about cancer, I'm bringing my sugar consumption as low as possible. And if I have cancer, like growing uncontrollably in my body, I'm going with no sugar at all until the cancer is gone. You know, sugar also destroys your digestive system and your gut health, right? And this leads to uh, systemic inflammation, which basically is at the root of every chronic disease. So uh, you, just, you just don't want sugar. I mean, we're going to keep going here if you, if you haven't quite gotten it yet. Sugar also reduces um, your energy levels and your focus. You know, and although sugar consumption often leads to like a short-term energy spike because of the spiking of blood sugar, um, it's followed by insulin. And then, because of the insulin, right, blood sugar level goes down, you get an energy crash, and then you experience fatigue. You know, and so the typical person who's using sugar to prop them up throughout the day gets into this cycle of repeatedly spiking their blood sugar. They spike and crash, spike and crash, spike and crash. You know, and that leads to lots of insulin, of course, and insulin resistance, and weight gain, and diabetes, and cancer, and heart disease, all related to long periods of time where insulin is, you know, in the body. And it's a path that is, is awful, right? Yet most people are actually on that path. Okay, so, on, you know, on your, if you're on board with reducing sugar, um, you know, you need to do this, right? You want to basically crowd out the sugar that you're currently eating it, because whatever, you're eating whatever you're eating, right? So when you go and you take something out, um, if you don't have something else to replace it with, it's very difficult, right? So I, this term crowd out basically means let, let's, let's put other things in there while you take the sugar out. So it makes it a lot easier. So uh, the things I have listed here is increasing healthy fats, um, making your own foods because a lot of prepared foods, foods when you go out are going to have a lot of sugar in them. Um, use natural sweeteners in place of sugar. Um, ditch juices altogether. Like I said earlier, they're just liquid sugar. Um, make sure you read labels. Um, you'll be surprised if you're not already reading labels when it comes to buying bottled drinks like iced tea. I mean, iced tea doesn't sound like it should have sugar in it unless it says sweet tea. But most of the iced teas in the store loaded with sugar, like as much as a Coke right? A cola. All right. And then, um, you know, eat real food. So, uh, you know, in terms of consuming healthy fats, this is going to help to reduce uh, sugar cravings and it's going to support brain function. Your brain needs fat, right? So this low fat diet that everybody's been on, you know, has basically led to all kinds of problems, including, including increased sugar intake and, and uh, you know, just not having enough fat in the body to support brain function. Uh, you know, to, to follow up on this, you can cook with coconut oil. Of course, has a has a good fat. Um, you can even just eat coconut oil. I mean, you literally can eat it with you know a bit of, a bit of cinnamon on a, uh, a teaspoon. Um, you can add olive oil to things. You know, you can put it on vegetables. Um, you can mix it in with like lemon juice and herbs, like to make a salad dressing. Um, if you if you purchase bottled smoothies or shakes, you can actually try making these on your own. You know, use ingredients like berries and leafy greens, kale, avocado, pure pumpkin puree, or unsweetened uh, coconut milk. Um, and obviously use water as well. Uh, I think it's going to get a little thick. Um, when it comes to sweetening, you want to use mainly stevia and moderate uh, amounts of xylitol. You don't want to use too much xylitol. Um, I, I'm not sure that uh, using a lot of xylitol would be a good thing, but for the most part, stevia, you're pretty good with and, and a little bit of xylitol. And replace juice with herbal tea or filtered water. Yeah. It's just, there's just no reason to drink the juice, right? All right, and this is the big one. You know, make sure that you read labels, you know, and you start looking for these alternative names because they've been hiding from you and um, you, you need to be able to see those, right? Now, if all else fails in your attempt to discern healthy food from unhealthy food, you can pretty much 
stay on the right track if you avoid eating foods that have a TV commercial. You know, it sounds kind of silly, but think about it, right? I mean, for the most part, foods that require advertisement are usually processed and not necessarily a healthy food choice. All right, so the goal is to decrease the amount of sugar that you consume and fuel your body with more nutrient-dense foods, right, such as healthy fats. If you do that, you'll notice both mental and physical benefits. All right, let's lessen your sugar intake, and I'll see you in the next video.